Welcome to God's Vision in Motion. Thank you for joining me once again. I'm joined today once again with my beautiful wife, uh, Bertha Smith, and uh, we're going to be talking about salvation. We're going to this will be part two of a lesson that we taught previously, and we want to show you from Scripture about rededication. I mean, being saved. Why do I need to be saved? Then we're going to talk about assurance of salvation. And today we're going to finish up with rededication and who I am in Christ and those type of things. So we're going to be talking about that because to us, it's very important for you to know that you're saved. Because one of the things I see people, they take, seem like they take it very lightly about salvation, being saved, knowing that if you believe in God and trust God, well, you must accept his way of coming back to him, not based upon your religion or denomination, but you need to know that you know that you know that you're saved. Because we Amen. see so many people who come into church, mm -hmm. and it's been our hard desire to be able to minister to as many people as we can to tell them about salvation, assurance of salvation. You need to know that you're saved, not be guessing whether you're you see, because now it's a thing going around where everybody's saved. We see people that never give God uh, 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 one moment of time. When they pay, when somebody in their family die, they go to talk about they looking up. Uh, they over in, and you know they up there play, If there's a ball player, they up there playing basketball or doing God use a Muhammad Ali. He fighting up in. That's none of that's in the Bible. Jesus said, "No man come except." He come through Christ. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to God except through him. And you need to know that because we're seeing people have, they're so slothful in having even insurance for themselves. They don't even have insurance for themselves. They're running around worrying about the president of the United States. They're running around worrying about this. and they, they All their hope is a man-made thing. Have no trust in God. Because God is the one that set up these institutions. And the people that get and you need to be able to trust God. You need to be able to do things for yourself and keep insurance so you don't become a burden to your family in case you die or some, someone in your family die and you're out there having a rummage sale or, or car wash or something trying to get somebody buried because you don't take first thing first. And, and, and one of the things I would like to, to turn to my wife, because sometimes I get so excited about, I get so excited, I run off and leave her. Yeah. But, <laughs> yes, my husband does get kind of excited, but that's a blessing because I know where my husband came from. And first of all, I want to thank you, audience, for, it, for inviting us into your home. And um, I, I notice we have quite about thousands of views, and I would like to let you know that we are really happy that you take the time to view what we're saying because we we thank God that you have taken the time to view what we are teaching. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to text us or email us on our website, God's Vision in Motion. I thank you so much once again. And once again, I know my husband really gets excited. And I try to get a word in age-wise, but it's well, all good. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's turn it. Why don't we look at the scripture so here? So right now uh, we're going to look at uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Okay. Uh, 1 Corinthians 5.7, if we can get...
Well, he's talking about a spiritual birth. He's talking about a spiritual thing, you know, and, and if you was an alcoholic, you know, whatever you were, but he said, turn from that. You turn into Christ because this world has some things for you out there. And if you fall in the world system, you already know that a, it must have to be something else. And I guarantee you, this is it. This is the way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. So let's turn over to, uh, I believe it's 1 John 4 and 15. Yes. 4, 1 John 4 and 15. If you, if you want to read it, you want me yes, to? Yes, I'll read it, and I'll okay. let you expound All on right, it. All right, 4. Uh, oh, this is 1 John chapter 4, verse 15. Is whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God. God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Amen. Praise God. That's 4, I said 4 and 15, First right? John 4, 15. Okay. Uh, whosoever, let me take my glasses off. I think I see better with 4 and 15. Mm -hmm. Whosoever shall confess Jesus Christ is the Son of God. God dwelleth in him. And he and we already read scripture based upon whosoever confess, and we saw that in the book of Romans. If you look down next to this scripture, that if you have a, a a Bible like mine, right next to it, it have it leads you right to it. It leads you to Romans ten nine. If you have that little little word right next to it, and that's how you follow your 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 teaching here, because these little things are put here for a purpose that you can go to the next scripture. You don't have to be confused or something. Just go to that. It says here, Romans 10, 9, and 10, and you go over there and they talk about you confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior with your mouth and believe in your heart. You have to believe something. Just saying words won't save you. But if you believe it, and if you had enough of this word, enough of this world system, and you come to him, this is the way God have designed the system. Now, your denomination might tell you something else, but we're only talking about what God, and I'm talking about what I decided to do because I was brought up in religion. So I know religion keep you always doing this, working. You're never doing this and keep you feeling with condemnation. You never arrive at no point. You're always old dog, you're old sinner saved by grace, all that kind of stuff. But the body, if we read the scripture here, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, old thing. Forget those things which are behind and, and the uh, thing about it, let's look at 1 John, Hunter, let's look at 1 John 5 and 11, 5 and 11, because this is what the Word of God says about it, 5 and 11. And it says, this is the record. Say that again. This is the record that the God record. This is the has record. given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son, Jesus Oh, man, Christ. I like that. And then, this is powerful. It is. And uh, he says here, I want to read that again. And he says here, and this is the record. Hey, <laughs> how plain can you make it? And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. life. And this life is in his son. He that had the son had life. And he that had not the son had, and not, life. had not life. And when the scripture right here, verse 13 these things have I written unto you. Believe, believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know, not wonder, or, uh, uh, you know, scratching your head, trying to, that, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe, that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Man, this is so, oh man, this is so good because, and, and he said, and this is a confidence. And this is the confidence that we ask in the thing. That we have in him. In him. Mm -hmm. Start that over. <laughs> and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will. His will. His will. He hears us. And, and verse 15. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. And so these are scriptures to let us know. This whole First John, you ought to read that every day. Every day you ought to be able to feed your, 
faith on the word of God here at First John, start in First John and read that whole thing here because it's so apropos to your salvation that you may know because if you go into much, uh, some churches and ask them the last thing on the agenda, last thing on the agenda, if they get to it, mm -hmm. about your salvation, about you being saved. They want to see you at church. They want to count the numbers. And when they count the number, most of the time they count the number based upon how much money they think they're going to come up with in that in that service. So they're not, the salvation is the last four thing from their mind. So you need to be able to get in these scriptures and study them for yourself. Because one of the things that we have now, as we move on from our rededication, as we come down to, uh, 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 let's go to, I want to read one scripture, but I want the others put on the scripture of Isaiah. Isaiah 115, verse 1. Isaiah 115. But I think I, I think I want to look at, well, this is the one, hold, hold up, honey. I want to look at this one here first because okay. I don't think, I'm trying to get a lot of stuff in and I, I'm so excited because if we put that whole scripture up on, on the rededication, son, I want to put that on there. And we want to look at 1 John, 1 John 1, 9. Okay, Because this good. is the psalm here. Yes. 1 John 1, 1 John 1, 9. Because this is, uh. That's for backsliders. Okay, 1 mm -hmm. John Rededication, 1 John 1, 9. Okay, you want to... Uh, yes, I'll read it. Okay, go ahead. Then. Oh, if we confess our sins, this scripture... ...is here, if we confess our sin, and this... If we confess our sins, he's faithful, faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteous. Now, this unrighteous means you have broken fellowship. It means that you had some righteous mm -hmm. when you got saved. When you got saved, when you were born again, you became righteous with God. But now, after that, you began to listen at the voice of the devil. To tell you when you went out and messed up. Well, mm -hmm. if you had been, if it had a, a take, it's kind of like, you know, to see it like a shot when they give you a shot of vaccination, and they come back to look and see if it take. <laughs> but that's what you feel like. In other words, what happened? You lose your sense, your sense of righteousness. But you are in God's sight, you are righteous. But if you come back to Him, and say, Father, forgive me. I blew it once again. This is what grace is all about. You're not practicing, not practicing sin right. to go out Correct. and say, well, I can do this and I just come and confess my sin. He's faithful and just forgive me. You're playing game because you now you think you can outsmart God. Now, he already know what you were going to do the day before you went out to, to conjure up that thing that you was doing. But broken fellowship can be in, in anything. You can lose your temper. Driving on these highways, you can lose your, your temple and, and so forth. And so the thing that God wants you to do is be able to work out your salvation. That to not come on condemnation where somebody pointing a finger at you, but the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And this is so apropos because this is why you need to be filled with the Spirit. This is why you need to have the Holy Spirit to be able to help you overcome this thing because in the book of Ezekiel, he's talking about he would take out the old stony heart and give you a heart of flesh. And, and as you begin to pray in your heavenly language, pray in the Holy Ghost, you receive the Holy Ghost, he's your helper. He's one to come along beside you when you can't do something. He'll help you in there. If you were cursing, you cuss all the time. Amen. You're the one needed. Well, I do this. I have this problem. you already saying... You're messing up yourself because you're using your mouth to say that, you know, the Bible talks about death and life in the power of the tongue. So when you show ownership, you claim, well, I'm like this. And the Bible talks about God hates pride. Oh, yes. So when you become prideful and puffed up about, well, I'm this kind of person, I'm this, 
Oh, you nothing without Christ. The Bible says you can do nothing. You can have nothing without him. But if you humble yourself and come and, and receive what God have for you, the book of, in the book of Luke, Jesus, he asked and said, why you call me Lord and not do what I say? And then once you get saved, I need to stick a pen here. Because I think a lot of times people, when they get saved, and the preachers, people tell you, oh, it's going to be glorious. It's all over when I get saved and everything. And they fail to tell you mm -hmm. that we have an enemy. Yes. And his job, is his, and he never sleeps. He's faithful to come and cause you while you're trying to shave, while you're trying to, do, to bring some kind of old negative. Take your words. When you begin to say those kind of things, puffed up kind of thing. He, he, he's in your amen corner. When you say, I can't, he says, you sure can't. You can't. I can do all things. You just got through saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Mm -hmm. You got all these different scriptures that you stand on, but you forgot about, nobody told you that we have an enemy to your faith. And the only thing that he wants to steal from you is your testimony. To get you from talking about God. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you became, have spiritual lockjaw. You, you you know this, but nothing coming out. You're not but you're not talking about anything. You're not sharing your faith with someone. And let, let me tell you about this: what you need to do after you get saved, after you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to go tell somebody. Go yes. to it help you to grow. Go tell somebody. I just accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Tell somebody. Don't be a one of those in a closet Christian thing. Well, everywhere you go, nobody know you're a Christian. You can still go to the bar. You, there's no middle of the road with God. There's no straddling in the road. Either you, you're on one side or the other. And and the devil will totally snuff you out and lead you down a bad path that you can never come back because the farther away you get from God, the harder it is to hear his voice. You know, the harder your heart, your heart becomes, well, 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 I used to go to church and, you know, I was raised up in my dad as a church a pastor. And my, well, so what? If that's the case, why are you not doing following what they told you, what they was all about? You know, if they was telling you about Jesus, and I was sharing with my wife today, I said, you know, honey, I said, I've never heard a person come tell me they were going through the scriptures. They were raised up at home, and they went through the scriptures as a little child and got a hold to the word of God. They accepted Jesus Christ as a early age and, and all of a sudden they didn't they're not going through all these things that most people come up. Most people come because they've been beat down. But the Bible says it's the goodness of God to lead a person to repentance. Amen. Now when I got saved I started teaching my children. I didn't come up in this, but when I got a hold to it, I, I remember calling back home talking to some of my relatives back there that 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 took me to a church. They took me to a church when I was a little bitty fellow. And I wanted to know, well, wait a minute. After after hard time, fell on hard time, and, and all the other stuff that come with the, with the street stuff, I wanted to find out, where did y'all get this stuff that you taught me? I want to find out because I want to teach my children, you know, some of the things that y'all showed me. They couldn't tell me. They didn't have a, They never got it from the Bible. They inherit what somebody else said. But I want you to know one thing about it. God's word will always lead you to the right. His word is truth. And as you begin to get into the word, Jesus said, man should not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So what you need is spiritual food. You know, and, and, and a lot of times I, I hear so many different things, honey, going on nowadays about a refill. You need to come back and, you know, after you receive the Holy Spirit, you know, it's like he leaked out or something yes. and left him or something. And you, you need to come back and, and get a refill. And all I find in the scripture where he said, stir up the gift that's in you. You need to come back and fellowship with the Father. It's like broken fellowship where you, don't, you just feel like, well, you don't feel empty. Now, in the book of Jude, let's turn over to the book of... You know, uh, before you turn to the book of Jude, I would just like to say the problem is that for those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, we become complacent and we don't share the love of God and the word of God with others. Because when we do that, we grow, we become excited. But when you don't share the love of God and what he has done for you, we become very complacent. 
Amen. And that's one of the biggest downfalls for us as Christians as to why we're not maturing. We, we're just like a bump on a log. We're just sitting there and, you know, just hoping someone else will come by and give us a word instead of us studying the word of God ourselves and sharing the word of God and the love of God with other people. And when you do that, we something grow. rise, rise yes. up in you. And, 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 and like you were saying, it's a form of, they can tell you about when you give money, it's coming back to you. But they never tell you about when I give the word out, it's coming back. Absolutely. God give me more. They can sing songs all day about the, about the finances, but there's, a, there's another thing that I want to do is really teach about giving Absolutely. and where to give and who to give it to. And while uh, money, the shortfall of money is not coming into churches like they're supposed to be because it talks about giving money to the dead. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, what, is, what, did, what does that mean? Something that's not doing anything. They might be doing a whole lot of stuff, but God doesn't know a thing about it. He never commissioned that. Exactly. He's and not it, included. Right. And it comes from, you know, like it comes from maybe a denomination. Well, we've been doing this because we are so and so and so. We are Baptists. I'm just laying out some names. You know, what well, we first Baptist church down at so and so. This is our thing. But see, that's kind of like uh, uh, what you call adultery. Because we're the body of Christ. Regardless of where you fellowship in that, you're only the body, you should be the body of Christ. He, and, and the body of Christ is not broke up in, in, in fraction. It's not broke up in denomination. Either you're in Christ or you're not. The Bible just told us that if any man be in Christ, not the Baptist church, the Methodist church, or whatever church, but I hear we do, we hear this all the time about when people have received the Holy Spirit and all of a sudden now they've been begin to feel like it and somebody said, so well, you need a refilling. And I don't find that in here. I hear this. Not in there. <laughs> this is what this is what a person needs to do. Let's see. Share up the gift is with Let's us. Let's see. Jude, the book of Jude. I think it's the uh, book of, let's see, Jude. I wrote it down here. Must be Jude 1, 20. Yeah, let's see. 120. 120. Jude 120. Oh, but, but, yes. That's it. It says here. But you, but you receive, you would know. The Bible says it's a gift, and you have to receive it. After the new birth, after you accept Jesus Christ, this is what uh, uh, what people don't seem to understand. Being born of the Spirit is for salvation. But to be filled with the Spirit is for power. To be imparted in you in the, in the person of the Holy Spirit. And his role in you there to help you when you can't. When you begin to be convicted in your head, he will come and convict you of sin. Not somebody else. He's coming to convict you when you're doing something. When you get out of line, when you stop walking the walk, the Holy Spirit will convict you. Now, you might not listen. You might not want to hear what the Holy but the Holy Spirit will just stay there. That's why he talks about grieve, not the Holy Spirit. But the, he, Jesus said that he will give you another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And, and John chapter 14, if you want to look look at John chapter 14, when he says, when the Holy Spirit come, the comforter come, then he will teach you. He will guide you and lead you in all things. But the whole bottom line is you have to be open to listen. And the more time that you spend with the Holy Spirit, stirring up, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy, praying in the Holy Spirit, spend time with God, you'll be more sensitive when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and convicting you of something doing wrong. Not somebody else telling you you're doing something wrong, but it'll rise up in you that, I no, no I can't go there no more. I've been going, and he, the whole bottom line, he will work with you because he already know mm -hmm. that thing in all of us, that thing that trip you up all the time, the, and the devil knows that thing. It's deeply rooted. You, you picked it up maybe way back when you was a little child, and it's still 
harassing me, and other people don't know, but you know what it is. And that thing, it'll ride you and just keep you going. But the Holy Spirit will help you. All of a sudden, it'll go away one day. You won't know when it leaves, and that's not important, but you'll know it that it left. No longer Satan can hold that over your head about you smoking all of me. You couldn't rest for smoking marijuana or the porn or whatever you've been involved in. But the Holy Spirit, if you truly want to live for God and you get into the Word of God and allow the Holy Spirit to help you do that, he will. He's willing and he waited on you. God would not make you do anything. In the Bible, it tells us about the sin nature. Mm -hmm. It tells us about the sin nature. And the only way you can overcome the sin nature is by allowing the Holy Spirit to help you. And, and excuse me, I want to say this. I just want to throw this in there. You know, the Holy Spirit is our GPS. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yes, he's our GPS. And if you trust him, in, in the book of Luke chapter 20, uh, uh, 11 and verse 22, it says, have faith in God. Yes. Have faith, faith in God. God. And literally it means have the God kind of faith. And when you begin to stand on the word of God, regardless of what come, because guess what? It's coming. Mm -hmm. Satan is coming, just like he did with Jesus when Jesus was led into the wilderness. He, wasn't, he didn't just go out there by himself. The thief came. Yes, the the came devil there. came. The Bible tells you who the thief is, the devil. He came and began to tempt him in every area. And the Bible says, Jesus, if you say, well, I, I can't help myself. And the Bible says Jesus had been tempted in all points like us, yet without sin. Yes. And you can overcome him, like I was saying, that drink that you've been to, that your favorite drink. All of a sudden, it won't taste the same. And after a while, the smoking, you know, but you have to give it to God. You have to give it to him in the name of Jesus. You come to God. Most people are trying to bypass God. They talk about Jesus. But the bottom line, you said, God, he's the one that sent the gift to help. Yes. He's the one that sent the Amen. Jesus. He's yes. the one that sent Jesus to redeem us from the curse yes. of the law. He yes. did it. Yes. And we have to acknowledge him. We have to come to God in the name of Jesus. He, Jesus said in that day, you ask me nothing. That's what he said. Jesus said, and in that day, well, what day was he talking about? The day when he stepped on the glory cloud and went back to return back to heaven. That's the day he was talking. And that day, ask me nothing, but whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Yes. So, I mean, that's plain. Ask the Father in my name. And he didn't say, ask God. He said the Father. He yes. said, call him Father. But no man on the face of this earth, don't call no man on the face of this earth, Father, but your heavenly Father. And so Amen. we want to we yes. uh, move on and turn to some other scripture. But I want to turn over here to... Uh, well, we looked at Romans, uh, 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 we looked at, oh yeah, let's go over to Acts. Acts, Acts, two. Acts 2 and 3. It's, it's so good to, because that's what Jesus, let's go over to 1, Acts two. 1 and 8. Oh, Acts 1 and 8. Mm -hmm. Okay. Acts 1 and 8. Acts 1. And this Verse is eight. and this is Jesus. Once you, he oh, says here. This is Jesus speaking. But you shall receive. But you shall receive power after the Holy, after the Holy Ghost. Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me both in Jer Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, let's go back here and look at this again. He said, "But you shall receive power." After the Holy Ghost has come up on you. Well, just think about it. If you don't have the power, and if you don't have the Holy Spirit, and he's your teacher, he's the one that God, the Lord had put in the church to oversee, to help us in the ministry as we go out into the ministry to teach people the word of God. You need the Holy Spirit. Not wonder do you have him. You need to know that you have him because you need to be, as a minister standing in the pulpit, you need to be able to tell others about the Holy Spirit, our weapon. You know, I was talking to a person the other day about the army. When they're going into the war, they, t they show everybody, they teach everybody what, you, what this enemy is like. They show them what they need to wear, make clothing, everybody dressed, everybody looking alike. When they go out, you see thousands of soldiers from afar. 
But all of them, right, if you're looking at them from afar with the helmet and all this, all of them look just alike. And that's what God wants us to do, to be able to say the same thing, that I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. So I can have a zeal when something's going on with my church or something's going on with my family. I'll be able to start praying in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will begin to minister in that particular area, show me what I need to do. Send somebody over there to be able to help them in that particular time. Or send an angel. We have angels that are supposed to go out. But you won't know that unless you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said this. I didn't say it. He I said, speaking. he told his disciples. Now, I say it all the time, and they bear me saying it again. Because the disciples, these are people who walked with him, talked with him, ate with him, and did everything. But he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem until they would endure with, with power. power. These are the people that he walked with, talked with. And so what is your excuse? Why are you to, to be able to tell others? Because this is so good. I'm, I'm wondering, the Holy Spirit is so good. Why aren't you telling some? Why wouldn't you want to tell somebody else about the good news? I know when I get a hold of some good news, I'm kind of like the aunt. I want to go get my friends and tell everybody. The aunt want to, you'll see a line of them. you see little scouts out looking for a little morsel of food. That little aunt, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you see a whole line of them going through your house, all over the walls and everywhere else. But he's not selfish. He's not going to try to keep it to his, keep it in, uh, under secret. That, uh, you know, uh, speaking in other tongues, the gift of the Spirit. Uh, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 12, it talks about the gifts of the Spirit. But all this worked through the Holy Spirit. Jesus did absolutely nothing until he was endured with power. Not one time when he entered into his ministry that he did anything without being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, let's go over to Luke chapter 4. I want to show you Luke chapter 4 about the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 4, and we're going to look at uh, a couple of scriptures over there. I hope I get, I'm, I'm rushing to try to, but I don't want my time to run out on it. Yeah, Luke 11, 13. Uh, Luke, uh, yeah, Luke 4-4. Chap- four, four. Okay. Luke 4-4. Four, four. And let's look at, do you have it? I have Luke 4-4. Four, four. Okay, Luke. And Jesus answered him saying, that one. Luke. It is written. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see, 12, 12, I believe it's. Luke 11, 13. Let's see. We have you here. Yeah, Luke 4, and when Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Let's see. It's not that Luke. much. Jesus, here's my limit. Let me nice. see here. That was so Verse good. 10, Let me try that one. Let's look at Luke. Let's look at 12. Let's look at Luke 12, 12. I hope I got this one right. <laughs> Luke 12, 12. I'm just rushing. That's what's wrong. Take your time. That point. Yes, this is Luke. Chapter 12, verse 12. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. And and this is talking about when you get in a certain place. When you get into a place where you can't. If you're going to court <laughs> and you're, you're wondering what you ought to say to the, to the judge. Well, the Holy Ghost will help you there. Absolutely. He will begin to, all you have to do is listen and get quiet. And this comes from Spending that time with the whole, with 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 the with your heavenly Father, knowing and praying in the Holy Spirit, praying with other tongues, that the Spirit gives you the utterance. And this is this is so good because I didn't know this. The other area I want to point out to you, and uh, uh, looking back is another one. On your on your journey, on your journey with Jesus, never look back. Because one thing about it, what God have for you, he doesn't take it away. He doesn't take give you something and then take it away. What he, If you stay on this journey, because in the book of Luke, uh, I mean, uh, uh, there's only one scripture. And I believe it's in Luke 17, 
chapter 17, verse 32. Luke, uh, it said, uh, just one little script. It said, remember Lot's wife. And if you read the book, of, it. it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. when, when, when the angels were bringing Luke out of the, his wife, decided to look back. There was some, and that's the thing about it. You can't look back at that club that you've been going to. You can't look back at that person that you've been dating and sneaking around at night, going back over, you know who she is, <laughs> running back over there. You can't do that. Backtracking will always get you in trouble. Because guess what? When something conjured up in your mind, because see, God speaks to your spirit. When something conjuring up in your mind to go back to do something, and paint it, that picture so real, if you get back over there, it's going to be a little bit of heaven on earth. Well, when you get over there, somebody could be waiting on you with a gun. That's how Satan set you up. Mm -hmm. You know, you've been running back over there. You've been seeing somebody's wife. Uh, whatever it is, it's a trap. Because one thing God will always let you know, there'll be a little inner witness in your spirit. Because the scripture said God is a spirit. Mm -hmm. So he speaks to his the spirit your spirit man. And the, and the more that you spend praying in the Holy Ghost, right now, if uh, let's go over to Luke chapter 11. I want to show you about the Holy Spirit. Luke, I believe it's chapter 11. Let's see. What is it, Luke? Uh, about the Holy Spirit receiving the Holy Spirit. No, uh, the Holy Spirit. One. It's uh, Luke eleven thirteen. Luke eleven thirteen. Yes, it's Luke chapter thirteen. Luke eleven and uh, eleven. Let's look at eleven. If a son. When I got first got baptized, why would I need to even ask if I got it all? In other words, if I, when I got baptized, accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, if I got it all right then without asking, why would I have to go? Well, th this would make this scripture done and void. It says here, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts, and this is the key word, gifts, it's a gift. Unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? It's just that simple. All you have to do is ask. And right now, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, all you have to do is ask. And, and the thing I like to say, don't run go asking your pastor or somebody else around you about the Holy Spirit. Because if they knew, they would certainly be telling you. And what they will do is talk you out of your blessing. Talk you out of being filled with the Spirit. Talk you out of, well, God doesn't do that no more. That went out with the early church and all that kind of old stupid stuff. And the Bible said he's still calling people today. And everyone that he calls, he wants them to be equipped, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you're out there today, and, you, and I would say to you, my time is running out, but if you're there and you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, let's pray this, pray this prayer with me. So, dear God in heaven, I'm a sinner. And I come to you in the name of Jesus. Your word says if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that I would be saved. And right now, I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And right now, I accept him as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Now you're saved. According to his word, cannot lie. You're saved. Yes. Now, the other part, being filled with the Spirit. I would like to, by proxy, lay hands on you to receive. That's the only scripture that talks about laying hands on people to be healed or saved. I mean, to receive the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay, let's, right now, so I receive, based upon what we just read here, I receive the Holy Spirit 
right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So I receive, I receive the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Now, just this is your faith. Just move your tongue around. You just like you did when you was a little baby because you didn't come here speaking perfect English. You didn't come here speaking no English. So just open your mouth and begin to make that noise like a little baby. And all of a sudden, that's your faith right there. And now you have to develop that. You don't have to sound like somebody else because just like you're talking to people, you don't sound like somebody else. But that's your faith right there. Receive and then begin to practice every day. Speaking in other tongues. Begin to speak in your other language. Because when you're born of the Spirit, God wants you to have a, another a, another language. That's what it's all about. God wants, to, like, and you're talking directly to God. You don't have yes. to understand it. You don't. All you have to do is operate it and enjoy talking to your Heavenly Father. It's yes. called the perfect prayer. It, it bypassed this. Mm -hmm. Because before I learned that, I started praying. I would just pray for me and my forward no more. Another thing about praying me, I'm the kind of person I like to pray to get results. I don't like to just pray to be doing something. I want results. I want to make sure I hit bullseye. If I go to a target, I want to shoot. I want to, and the close, I might miss it, but I'm shooting for the target. And that's the thing that most people don't do when they're just saying a whole lot of stuff, praying, you know, but I'm praying. I want results when I Amen. pray yes. because I love my family mm -hmm. and I want them walking in the right way when things, when they're out in the streets, I want to know what they're doing. And so I began to pray. I have a zeal. The Holy Spirit will give me a zeal of what's mm -hmm. going on out there for their safety, for their protection. And that's why so many things are happening to Christian, you say, well, why do good things, bad things happen to Christian? Well, if you get off track, it's going to happen to you. But if you begin to pray in your heavenly language, trust the Holy Spirit, he will, you will always be ahead of the game. When the enemy come in like a flood, you'll be able to lift up a standard against a no, no, devil. Too late, you got me too late, now I got the power. I received this power, and I'm going to enjoy it and operate in it. In Jesus' name. Well, thank you for joining thank me. You. If this thank message has been a blessing to you, we'll be back again. And we thank you. If you feel like sending us some kind of offering to help us with this, if it's been a blessing with you, the Bible talks about sowing. And, and, and I believe we're sowing good seed into your life. I'm coming to those who are hungry and thirsting after righteousness. It's not, I know this is not for everybody. But I want those that have ears to hear, let them hear. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father thank God. You. We thank you for your word. Thank you. And we know that your word will not return void. And we thank you for those that you have given us, Father God. And we commend them into your care and into your keeping. And we call them blessed right now in Jesus' name, that everything that they set their hands to do, that they will be blessed, that they will be prosperous in all that they do. In Joshua 1, 8, it says, Thou shalt prosper in everything that you do. You shall make yes. your way prosperous. God is, you will make your way. If you meditate to do all that he asked you to do, yes. then you would make your way prosperous and have good success. In, In Jesus', Jesus name, name, amen. amen. Praise, God. Praise God. Praise your Father God. We thank you for your word. Thank you, Father God, for this tool that you have blessed us with to be able to take your word to the world, Father God, knowing that it would not return void but it will accomplish that which you please. And that's our desire, to be able to meet the needs of the people out there. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank Glory to God. God. Glory. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, honey, Thank for joining you. me. Thank you this has been good. Me. Did yes. it run off? <laughs> no, it was, it was fruitful. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise your